Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Chevrolet Colorado and we're going to be doing a transmission fluid filter change and then we're going to be doing a flush. Uh, this has the 8L45 transmission in it and uh, the fluid we'll be using today is the Amsoil Synthetic Low Viscosity uh, Transmission Fluid Signature Series. Here's a spec sheet on the Amsoil Synthetic ATF, the Signature Series. And uh, first thing I want to show you here is there's two different ones here listed on this page. One is this uh, red one is the older formulation uh, multi-vehicle synthetic ATF and uh, then the blue bag here this one right here is uh, it's a low viscosity fuel efficient synthetic ATF and that's what most of your newer transmissions are going to call for. Um, the thing about this uh, chemical engineering synthetic is it uh, reduces the operating temperature of your transmission by 20 to 50 degrees over petroleum based fluids and uh, the, the life of the fluid is significantly longer as well. As you uh, drop that temperature out of that transmission, all the soft parts inside last a whole lot longer. All the seals, uh, all the piston seal rings, um, as you drop the heat by 20 to 50 degrees, the life of those soft components goes up significantly and that extends your transmission life. And as an example, we have a, uh, a taxi fleet, severe service taxi fleet field, uh, field trial this was in Las Vegas. Um, what they did is they run the Amsoil for 180,000 miles in the transmission and uh, they selected the transmission to, to tear apart and see how everything looked. And what you're, sh you're seeing here is the synthetic Amsoil, um, even after 180,000 miles, contained 83% of its original oxidation inhibitors. And uh, you can see the, the valve body here looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the clutches, again, they're clean, uh, very little signs of wear on them. Uh, very good condition. Um, this is the kind of protection in the desert heat of Las Vegas that the Amsoil provides. So one of the best ways to extend the life of your transmission is through the use of that Amsoil Signature Series ATF. As we go down to this next sheet here, it gives you all the specifications, all the uh, ASTM specifications here on the two, two products. The ATF is the older formulation, the ATL is the low viscosity right here. So as we go to the specifications, Here's the applications for the older ATF, and this is just part of them. The, other, the rest of it's at the top of the other page. I'll show you that here. Right here is the remainder of the specs for that older ATF. And then right here is the specifications for the low viscosity ATF for most of the newer transmissions. So this gives you uh, all the specifications for that fluid, and uh, it shows you significantly how much better that performs than the regular fluids out there. Uh, if you want to extend the life of your automatic transmission, this uh, chemical engineered synthetic signature series AMSOIL is the best way to do it. This is the home page of fluidcapacity.com. There's two buttons, one for power sports fluid lookup guides and the other one's for auto and light truck. That's what we're working with today. Click on that and it'll bring up this page. Type in the year of your vehicle. On this one it's a 2018. Hit the build list button. And we're working on Chevrolet trucks, so we'll click on that and come down to Chevrolet Colorado uh, 3.6 V6 engine. And on the right side here, it brings a printable a button right here for printing this off. Gives you all the uh, fluids Amsoil recommends for each cavity for the engine, transmission. Uh, the transmission we're working on is the 8L45, it's an 8 speed automatic. And it has links to each of the fluids. If you want to click on them, it'll take you to each of the fluids. And we got the differentials, transfer case, and brake fluid. And down here it gives you the filters, any of the filters that are available through Amsoil. And down here is the real information we're after, and that's the capacities. Uh, the engine coolant system, uh, automatic transmission, both the 6-speed and the 8-speed, the initial fill. And down here, this is the 8-speed with cooler, uh, total fill, 11.4 quarts. And it has the differentials, and it has the transfer case as well. So again, easily printed off up here at the top of the page and uh, very handy information. The first thing we have here is the uh, transmission filter. Here's the AC Delco number. And I was going to put on a new uh, gasket. It does have a reusable gasket, but at this point in time I couldn't get the, uh, the gasket. It wasn't available. So we will be reusing the gasket. Um, here's the filter itself. and. Uh, <clears throat> when we go to do this transmission, uh, first thing I'm going to do is check the fluid level of where it's at. This, this tranny has about 73,000 miles on it, and I believe the fluid is still original in it. 
Um, so we need to have the vehicle up and level when you go to check it. And the temperature needs to be between about 131 and about 145 degrees right in that range. Uh, as the fluid heats up, it expands. It has a, a tube inside on the bottom of that transmission pan. So when we take the plug out, it's going to just barely dribble out at that temperature. So we're going to check that first just to see where we're at to start out. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the pan down. And uh, the main thing is keep the vehicle level. And uh, you got to have that temperature between 131 and 145 degrees to, to check it. And on this truck, there's a readout on the dash that will give you the exact temperature of the transmission. So it makes it very easy to do. So we're going to get started with this and be back with you. Okay, we got the transmission temp up here. This morning is about 20 below. Um, the trip up here got it up to about 84 degrees. So we need to get up to 131 to about 145 to check the level. So what I've been doing is uh, just doing a little bit of power braking to bring the temperature up. And when you do the power braking, um, what we're doing is put it in gear, hold the brake, accelerate. And we'll hold it there for 15, 20 seconds. It builds up a lot of heat in the torque converter and then after we do that we just back off of it, put it back into neutral and we can watch that temperature come up. But we're getting there, we're at 127 right now. so. For the last five minutes or so, I've just been doing that about every minute or so. Just kick it into gear and power brake it for about 15, 20 seconds. And then I'll put it back in neutral and just let it circulate watch that temp come out. There we're at 131. So we're getting right into the range we need to be. I'm going to give it just one more shot here, get it up just a little higher. Okay, there's 132 degrees. We're going to go ahead and check it at this point. Yeah, we're up to 134. Alright, pretty happy with that. So we'll go ahead and check the fluid here before we get started. Okay, we got the vehicle up and level and we're at 138 degrees right now according to the dash temp for the tranny. And uh, the check uh, bolt is right here. And that is a, I believe it's a 10 millimeter, yeah, 10 millimeter head. So we got the vehicle running up and level. What we should have is the fluid uh, should just dribble out of here at that temperature. Might be a small stream for just a little bit. Okay, we had just a couple little drops there, so looks like we're pretty close to where we need to be. It's not running out. There's a drip or two just dribbling out. Looks to be just right. Okay, we kind of wanted to check that before we started, so looks like we got another drop about ready to come out, but that, that's about where it needs to be, just barely dribbling out. Okay, that verifies that the tranny fluid is at the level it needed to be before we started, so go ahead and shut it off. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop the uh, oil out and get ready to take this pan off to change the filter. And there's a ledge up here on top side of uh, where that flange is at, where the pan bolt's on. And there's usually always going to be dirt and uh, debris up there, dust and all that stuff that can fall down in your pan. So before you get started with it, take a blowgun around that outside edge and uh, get rid of all that. Go along there and blow it all out and uh, make sure that there's nothing going to fall down into the pan when you go to take that off. So next thing we're going to do is take out that 
little 10 millimeter bolt and let as much of that fluid drain out as we can. There's still going to be quite a, quite a bit in the pan. This is the only, the only plug in the pan. So the fluid's draining out. Don't look too terrible bad. It's still got a red color to it. Um, the owner's complaining of some uh, shuddering going on a little bit. Uh, so we're going to put in the Allen's oil and that usually knocks that shuddering in the head and takes care of it. So we're going to let this here drain out and then we're going to go ahead and take all the bolts out there, 10 millimeter head. And uh, we'll pull that pan down and be back with you. Okay, we've got, we're down to the last couple of bolts here. And uh, it's going to be kind of a mess when you take this off because you can't drain that pan down like you really, really need to. Make sure I get all these off here. Okay. And there's two bolts right here where the exhaust is at where you can't get the impact up. So you have to use like a quarter inch drive ratchet. But have yourself a big drain pan because it's going to start coming at you. Try to take the front down first if you can. Almost out. Gotta see if we can get that snuck out there beside that exhaust. Okay, so we've got this pan to the point where it's almost out. But right back there, they've got some electrical connectors that are not going to let us get it out in decent shape. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and change out that filter. We're going to pull the magnet out and clean it. We're going to clean that pan in place, and then we'll uh, we'll put up the new the new filter and all that, and then we'll uh, put her back together. Uh, another engineering oversight by GM. I've been seeing this a lot with their vehicles. Uh, they could have left probably another eighth to a quarter of an inch for that pan to get out, but they didn't. So, but uh, we've got it down far enough where we can get everything changed. You know, the filter's right there, so we'll clean everything up and. Uh, and we'll be back with Okay, we're going to take this uh, filter down. There's probably going to be some fluid coming at us. Not too bad. Some in the filter. Okay. So that takes care of the filter. It's going to be dribbling down some, but uh, what we'll do is push the rest of that fluid on out. Soak up with a rag as much as we can with brand new rags, clean rags. Like I said, this is less than ideal, but I'm not taking the exhaust down just to get the pan out. I can clean the pan in place. When you live in the rust belt, you don't really want to mess with the exhaust if you can help it because it's like opening up Pandora's box. The road salt has everything so corroded you can't get back together. You end up spending a day putting the exhaust back together with new studs and everything. So... Now the next step, well there's two magnets, I see two magnets in there. So I'm going to pull those magnets out. And there's a dimple right in the middle where that magnet goes. You can see there's a, a high point that they have pressed in the pan. So we'll take those out and we'll clean them. I'll show you the cleaning process here when we get out. But I'll get both magnets here. And then I'm going to go inside and I'm going to clean that pan just as thorough as I can. Right back here is the, the electrical hookups that are keeping us from coming out. And like I said, we need about an extra quarter of an inch of, of uh, room to get that pan out completely, but they just aren't giving it to us. And right here is the stem right here for the uh, level of fluid that we're checking. 
when the engine's running, it'll just dribble out of there. So, and then around that edge, you gotta make sure, cause there's gonna be some dirt around that edge where that uh, gasket sits. You make sure you get that all cleaned out too. Cause that's the main thing is get everything nice and clean. As clean as you can get it. So for now, that's still dripping. I'm just gonna let it drip. I'm gonna clean uh, the magnets and uh, get the new filter and get things ready to go back together. And I'll do the final cleaning on the panel and come back. Here's the magnets. And they got the normal fuzz on from the 73,000 miles of wear. What we're gonna do is clean them up and get that fuzz off. And I soak as much of it off the rag as I can. And you can use either brake clean solvent or ether to clean it the rest of the way. If you're gonna use ether, make sure you keep any sparks or flames away or you're gonna have fire. and clean and dry. We'll do that to the other one and uh, then I'll finish cleaning the pan and we'll start putting things back together. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this flange here good. Because there's a little bit of dirt up there in that flange too. And I want that clean where that gasket sits. So I'm basically gonna clean it from the top on down into the pan because the top is where the dirt, any dirt that's there is gonna be. Let's see if I can keep my light in place. Maybe, That'd be the next thing. And then I'm gonna get a scraper as well, gasket scraper, cause there's, there's quite a bit of that, that dirt right there. I'm gonna try and get that off. You can kind of see it right there on the end of my fingernail. But I wanna get that off cause that's where that gasket sits. I just don't want it interfering with the seal of the gasket. So I'm gonna get that and clean off that dirt. And then I'm gonna start finish up the cleaning of that pan. Okay, I'm gonna clean from the top here, this flange on down. I wiped down all the oil already. There's gonna be some dirt that uh, gets in around that uh, gasket a little bit. So I'm using a sharp scraper here. Just make sure you don't gouge the aluminum. I wanna go around there all the way and I'll make sure that I get that cleaned up. And there's some of that that may drip into or fall into the pan. We can clean it up when we're all done. That's why we're starting at the top here. Okay. And that gets rid of most of that uh, dirt there. And we'll go around and wipe it down once more. All the way around, that'll take care of the flange. So it's good and clean. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, I gotta clean up that gasket. So we'll get that next. Okay, around the outside of this uh, gasket here, there's quite a bit of that, that dirt. I'm just using a, a little stainless steel toothbrush and lightly brushing that to get it loose. And again, this is a reusable gasket. Right over here, we got a little bit of dirt and stuff around that uh, locator. We'll just go around and clean it up, and then we'll spray it with uh, either ether or brake clean to get the rest of that junk off. And then we'll slide it back up in place. Ready to go back together with that. Okay, we got the magnets all cleaned up. The pan I've got all cleaned up. There's still gonna be some dripping coming down. Can't stop that. And we're gonna put those magnets back on the dimples there where they belong. And 
Next thing we're going to do is put on the uh, put on the gasket because we've got to sneak that in. And then I'll put in the. Uh, I make sure I get it the right direction here. Let's take a look. And I think it goes just like that right there. There we go. Yep. Okay. So we we'll take that gasket and slip it into place. And it wants to hook on the front, so let's get it up here. Come on. Almost got it in place. And there's a little, uh, little nipple right here. It goes through the pan. It's kind of tough to see from the front there where we're at. But there's that one. It's a locator. And I think there's a locator on the front too, maybe. But you can see here. Yeah, there's one right here. It goes through the pan right there. So there, the gasket is in place. Now we're going to bring that pan back down again so I can get that filter in. And right here is where that filter goes, and there's a rubber seal around there. I'm going to take some of that oil and put it on there quick so it gives a little lubrication going up. And it's in place. There we go. So, magnets are in, filter is in. Next step is uh, wiggling that pan in place. And. Coming up against that filter a little bit. Make sure I get that in the right spot. There we go. That filter's got a spring on the back side. Here's the old one. And that spring has got to be in the right spot. And it puts a little bit of down pressure as you're pushing up on that pan, you can kind of feel it. But you got to make sure you have that uh, filter in the right spot. going to feel a little bit of resistance when you go to put that up and that's normal right there it is I can feel just a little bit right there where it's pushing on that filter then we're gonna go ahead and put these bolts in all the way around and then we'll do the torque on them so we'll get these all bolts all in and we'll be back with you okay the bolts all around the pan get 80 inch pounds of torque so we're going to torque these all down and uh, we'll kind of do it in a crisscross pattern and we'll go around and check it all. And uh, next thing will be filling up the transmission. Okay, I took a, a blow gun and blew off all around. Right here is the fill port and it's on the passenger side of the tranny. And what you're going to do is take either a screwdriver, or I'm using my thumb here and you can get that center piece up and you got to work that, that piece off right there and you can pull the whole thing out. Come on. There it is. Okay, so there's the plug. You can take it out. So that gives us an opening there, and that opening is it's about the size of my finger, probably about a half inch diameter. So I've got a pumper, and I'm going to put the end of the pumper in there to fill it up. Okay, so now we're set to, uh, to fill it. Uh, what we're going to do is take out this, uh, we'll take out the where we checked the oil earlier, the uh, bolt on that standpipe, and we're going to fill it till it comes out of there, and then we'll start it up. And uh, once we have it started up, well, we're going to do the flush first. I should say that um, we're going to fill it up until it starts coming out of here. And I'll put that bolt back in, and I'm going to fill it some more because we're going to take off a cooler line up front. And we're going to do a flush. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll get that done and be back with you. 
Okay, we're getting ready to do this flush, and we gotta take off this cooler line. It's right here at the end of my finger, and it goes down. This is the return line going back to the transmission. Okay, so there's a little plastic keeper. We're gonna slide that down the line. And then there's a little uh, keeper for that line right there. And I've got an O-ring pick to take that off. They make tools, but uh, what I found is those tools are quite expensive and most of the time you have to be able to get two fingers or two hands down there to work them. One to pull in the line and one to um, work the tool so you can get the clip off. So right here, I don't want to lose that clip. Okay, Right there is my little clip. Okay. And we're going to take that and set it off somewhere safe. And then we're going to take a paper towel. Because your line's going to have some fluid in it. And we'll put that right underneath it, just like that. And then work that line off. It should pull straight out. It's got, there it goes, right there. Okay. Now. The next step is we got some 3 8 poly line, and I'm going to come in kind of right in here by this wiring harness so I can get a nice straight shot at it. And it's 3 8 OD. You can buy yourself some poly tubing at Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or your local hardware store and slide it in, and it'll seal on the O ring right there inside that fitting. Okay, so I put in right now I've got right at uh, eight quarts of fluid that I put in the transmission of the new Amsoil Synthetic. Okay, and we're going to start this up and uh, we'll, we'll shift it into gear for probably about uh, three or four seconds at least in each gear and then we'll go back to park and uh, when I see a, a nice color change then we'll, we'll stop and uh, button things up. But that'll flush out the torque converter and it'll also flush out the cooler. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Okay, word to the wise. This other cooler line here, the return line, it wants to spit some fluid out and make a mess. So I'm gonna put a hose on that and go to the pan as well because it wants to push a little bit back on that hose. So we're gonna come up front here and do this again. Okay, go ahead and start it up. Total fill in this transmission is just about 12 quarts, and I've got about eight in it right now. Yeah, that fluid's looking nice and cherry red now. Go ahead and shut it off. Okay. That's looking beautiful there. Yeah, make sure you put a line on that, uh, on that tube out of that cooler, because otherwise you're going to have a little bit of a mess. There's a little bit of flow that wants to come out of that other line as well. So that gets both, both avenues covered. Okay, I'm going to show out here how to put that clip back on, because it's a whole lot easier to see it here than it is down there in the truck buried down there beside the radiator. So here's the clip, okay? And basically what you're gonna do is you're going to take that clip and there's there's three slots. There's a slot here, slot here, and there's one on the bottom. So there's three slots. And you're going to bridge one of those slots and you're gonna push it in just like that. And then there's a ramp right here at the end of my finger o-ring inside that seals on the snout right up here where my fingers at and when you push that on it clicks over and you give it a pull or a tug and then you put your keeper back on and you're done okay so we'll try and uh, tape this up here I don't think you're gonna be able to see it real well because my big fat hands are gonna be in the way but that shows you how to get that clip back in and uh, get that uh, cooler line hooked back up Okay, right here's the line. The bottom, you want to make sure the bottom is out where it needs to be because you got to have some flexibility to get that in there. And uh, take it and push it straight in just like that. And it's over the clip and give it a tug a couple times and make sure it's on there snug. And then put your keeper back on over it. 
and there it is. And if you spilled any, uh, use some uh, brake clean or, or ether or something to clean it up. But again, if you're going to use ether, make sure it's not too hot and you don't have any sparks. You're going to have flames. So, that's buttoned up. And I believe down here it goes into this little clip right there. Yep, got a plastic keeper there for it. There we go. Alright, that's it for that. Okay, we're going to take out this uh, standpipe plug for checking the level. We got the flush all done. And I initially put in 8 quarts of fluid. And 8 quarts, it'll just start running out up here in that fill port. So, you don't want to put any more net in. And we'll see if there's any, how much is left in here. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to fill it up until it starts coming out of there. And after it starts coming out of there, I'm going to have them start it. And here we go. And after you start it, um, I'm going to have you put it in each gear for probably about 8 to 10 seconds, okay? Oh, it's coming out. Okay, go ahead and start it up. Okay, so right there it's in park. You got it in park now? Okay, it's in park now, so we're gonna go until it just starts dribbling out. Then we're gonna get it warmed up to temp again and uh, recheck it. You can see the flow starting to slow down there a little bit. So right there is about what I'm happy with. It's just, just starting to dribble out almost to the point where you got some grips. Okay, right there. That's where I want it. So we'll put that plug back in. And snug it up. And like I said, we're gonna get up to 131 to 145 degrees. And uh, then we'll pull that plug out again and recheck it. Okay, we're gonna warm this fluid up and the temp right now is looks like 96 degrees. So I'm gonna do a little bit of power braking, put it in the drive and uh, just gently bring the, the uh, temp up. Just power brake it for maybe maybe 10 seconds, 8, 10 seconds, and then we'll just back off of it, pop it into neutral, and the temp will slowly climb up. Do that about every 30 seconds to a minute, and uh, we'll start getting that temp up. There we go, we're jumping up a little bit. We got up to 100. So yeah, just put your foot on the brake, hold it tight, and uh, hit the accelerator a little bit, take it up to about 1,500, 2,000 RPM for five, 10 seconds, and let it off back into neutral. And then hit it again. That gives it a chance to dissipate any heat that's uh, produced in that torque converter. So we're gonna get it up to temp, and then uh, we'll go back underneath and check that, uh, that fluid level once we get it up to temp. Okay, we got this up to 136 degrees. And uh, we just did some, some light power braking to get it up there. It took us probably about five minutes. But uh, just power brake it for five seconds, ten seconds, and put it back in neutral and let it cool off. And, and uh, you'll get there. A day like what we have right now is 20 below today, and I, I can't get the temp up just driving it down the road. So that's what we had to do. So we're going to go underneath next and, uh, and recheck the fluid level. Okay, we got it up to temp. We're at about 136, 138 degrees. And... 
just take that out because the fluid has expanded. It takes up more space so it grows in size. We're going to let that run there for a little bit until it comes down to a drip. Okay, right there is about what we want. A few drips. Okay. So we'll put that plug in. And that gets torqued to about six foot pounds, so right around 70 inch pounds. Okay. Go ahead and shut it off. So we torque that, and then the only thing left is putting this plug in over there where we filled it at. And uh, you can kind of see the shape of it and how that goes. You just push it in, and when it bottoms out right here on this lip, and you push that, push that top down, and that uh, pushes out on that side of the body so it's nice and tight. So that's it for this, uh, this flush, and I want to see how much fluid I use. Looks like uh, just over 12 quarts which uh, this holds just shy of 12 quarts total fill. So that gives us a good flush. Pretty much all that fluid has been changed out. And uh, well, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.